Welcome to the Lead Every Day Show. Our mission is to see a world well-led. And our strategy to get there? To empower leaders like you to lead every day. So let's get to work. Leadership is stewardship. And when I think about stewardship, the first thing that comes to mind is my money. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Actually, not my money. We're going to talk about yours. Welcome to the Lead Every Day Show. I'm Randy Gravitt. And I'm Mark Miller. And we'll start by saying we are not financial experts by any stretch of the imagination. But Mark, we do know that one of the things that holds people back, maybe the thing that holds somebody listening today back more than any other thing is this idea of money or maybe the lack of money or the misuse of money. Let's dive into that a little bit today. Yeah. If if you've got a mess in your finances, you got a mess in your life. And that impacts your family and your relationships. And it certainly impacts what you're trying to do at work. And because we've both been on the journey for many, many years, we thought we'd just share a few of the lessons that we've learned along the way. We're old. We've been around a while. We're old. I'm older than you. And yes, we've learned a few things. Yeah. And um, yeah, not to, to be misconstrued as financial advice, but just some of the things I we think learned. there's some principles though that I think we there have are learned some that will be helpful to anybody that's listening today. Yeah, and and we've learned those. Um, yeah, like I say, through the years. So, but before we even get into those, tell me, how did you learn about money? You know, it, it actually. Uh, well, I'll say a couple of things here. One of the things, you know, some people's brain works in a math way, and some people's don't. One, one. I mean, it's just I think about it a lot. I mean, I, it's it's been a uh, it's, it's kind of a natural way that I think about things. So math, your math, the, ma- the math side of things. Exactly. And, uh, but I would say the money side of it, it, it started, you know, for me as a kid, I mean, my, my parents, they were, you know, my dad had a, had a job with Georgia power. My mom's working in the school system. They we're just an ordinary family, but the way they took care of money and, and spent money and didn't spend money and gave money and all that stuff, they modeled for me. I think a healthy uh, a healthy picture of, of at least right th- th- that's my picture I guess sure it's, you know they modeled sure. for me that and I learned a lot of it even as a kid and and those principles I learned as a kid um, have have carried through my whole life I mean they really have I've been I've just I've, I've just seen so many people that have done things different than what my parents said and it doesn't seem like it ever turns out good when we spend more than we make you know that's one of the my mom's like always. You, you, you got to you got to spend less than you make. You got to go, you know, it starts with earning, right? Maybe it even starts with with a plan. I mean, just having a, a budget, some of those kind of things. But just this idea of of taking care of of what you've been given. Um, yeah, money, money is a great tool if we use it correctly. But if we don't, uh, what what there's a there's a verse in the Bible that says it's the root of all kinds of evil. And it just seems like that's so true. If we don't get it right and we misunderstand money could be a big thing and so um it can lead to a mess like you said so i think my mom and dad's where where i got that how about you what what well i i think i learned quite a few things from mom and dad but but because i don't have a math brain i was probably (laughs) slow to pick up on a lot of those lessons i i tell you when it became much more clear for me was when i entered the workforce Um, as some of the listeners may know, I had the privilege to work with Truett Cathy, the founder of Chick-fil-A. And he was very uh, fiscally conservative. In fact, uh, as an organization, we didn't have any debt for decades. In fact, we had some debt at one point, and he said he wanted to pay it off. And he actually told me, he said, I want to pay off the debt that we've got before I die. And I said, well, then we're never going to pay it off. And he said, why would you not pay it off? I said, to keep you alive forever is what I told <laughs> exactly. him. But we actually did. We we slowed our growth on purpose so that we could pay down some debt because he wanted us to be debt-free as an organization. So it was very financially uh, and fiscally conservative. And and he, he taught me a lot about money, not just not just um, his thoughts about debt and the weight that he said it would put on you mm. when when you had that kind of uh, responsibility. Yeah. But at the same time, he taught me so much about generosity, mm. which to me is a, the the undervalued part of stewardship of how is we, the opportunity that we have uh, to be generous with yeah. our resources. Yeah. So true it, true it. Along with my mom and dad, probably taught me. Most of what I know. Yeah, it's good. He and he modeled that. I mean, it's, it's, it's so many great stories about his life, which are cool. Well, as I think about some of these principles, you know, this idea of of spending less than we make, which is great. But but you mentioned there uh, the debt free thing. I think there's 
you know, obviously there's times where people borrow money and I, I get that, but I think there's some huge power in being debt free. I mean, this idea of you don't have the burden of debt and you're able to make some decisions knowing that you don't owe somebody else. That that's a powerful one as well. And so maybe there's somebody listening out there who's you got a situation where you're just in so much debt here that you can't look at something there. And, and it, I, I think just starting just these small steps to go, okay, this is what I'm going to attack first. And, and it goes back again to that plan. Like if we yeah. don't have any plan for our money, can you imagine being it in your business at Chick-fil-A or whoever's listening, you got your own business and you, you, you would not, you would not, uh, this will be bad English. You would not not have a plan. I mean, you're, right. you're gonna you're gonna have a budget for your money in the workplace. Later, leaders are planful. They are. The best and, ones and, are. You know, a lot of them. You know, you're managing millions of dollars, and I mean, all kind of departments and budgets and and everything. And yet, you go home and you don't give any thought to it at all. And then you're wondering why your success is not accelerating. It's because you've got this burden of of financial you know, struggle at home, I think it can be a hard thing. And so, yeah, that's another one. I, I think also uh, one of the things that has helped me through the years is I was taught early on that you should save some, you should save some for the future and, and the future does come. And, you know, it's like, I, I, I love that mindset, but I don't think you can start too early. Right. right. I mean, you know, it, I mean, even and you, compounding, as I understand Interest, it, is our that's, friend. That's the way it works. That's, that's the way that's they, right. they explained it to me. Yeah, that's exactly Compounding right. is your friend. That's right. So if you've got time in front of you, great. Get started. I mean, don't wait till you get, you know, get older. Speaking of older, so you you, yeah. been, you know, you said you're you're older. We're old. We've been around for a while. If you could, if you could go back, there, there I mean you're younger leaders listening here. What would you say to a young leader who's like, where do I start? What do I do? How, I, I don't even know how to think about this. Yeah. Well, uh, I wanna, maybe they didn't have parents that taught I, them anything. I want, they, don't, they don't work for a leader right. like Truett. I mean, I want, I want to, to reaffirm what you just said. You, you need to have the mindset that you're going to spend less than you earn. Uh, I think that's a great place to start. Yep. You, you probably need a plan mm -hmm. of some sort, a budget saving matters, but I tell you what I would do differently uh, I have a financial advisor now who's mm -hmm. who's very, very helpful. Um, and I probably should have hired him 20 years sooner. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of made this decision early on, which, which again, I don't think was the right decision. Well, if I'm going to save and give, then that's all I need to figure out. And I, I didn't have smart people around me early who could have helped me steward my income better. Think about how to invest. I mean, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, so I would, I would encourage young leaders, any leaders, uh, do you have somebody you trust helping you with that plan, yeah. helping you make those wise investments? Um, I would, I should have, and would do that earlier. Yeah. Uh, now that I understand the full benefit. I love that. that. And, and I would say one more really, as I think about it, is this idea of you mentioned it earlier, but being generous, being being a a person who doesn't just take your money and and it's your money and you don't share any of that. I, I think there's so much power in being able to help others. There are people all around the world who don't have a voice for themselves. I think sometimes we can give them that. And I know we have causes that we're passionate about that we get to help give voice to some people who really their stories wouldn't be told if it weren't for people stepping up and doing some things. And and one of the things that, that I always, I mean, this is crazy how this works, but I have never regretted giving money away. Like I, ne I never get on the other side of that. It, it really, I, I feel so much joy knowing that you've helped somebody else. It's, it's crazy how that works. And, and uh, it actually, it's almost like it multiplies and, and uh, I don't know that you, you I mean, the money doesn't necessarily come back, but you know, I mean, maybe you could argue that, <laughs> that it does, but, but the joy is there, and and when you know you've helped somebody who can't help themselves, I think that's that's huge as well. So maybe that's something you ought to consider. Uh, I know this is a little bit different topic today. We're talking about something that that normally we wouldn't talk about, but I, again, let's go back to where we started. I think if we're going to try to accelerate our success, how we think about our money outside of work is is a big deal. Not just your body and your relationships in the last couple of days. It's really what do we do with what we have? Remember, leadership is stewardship. And Mark, you you told me years ago, stewardship is temporary. Like we're we are getting older, and we're not going to be here forever. How how we handle this and 
what we do with what we've been given. I think it's a, I think it's a huge thing. So I hope you'll give some thought to that. Uh, we, we're, uh, again, we want to really do everything we can to win outside of work. It, it's what positions us to win at work and, and really win in life, which is, which is cool. Remember, the best leaders lead every day. I hope you'll keep doing everything you can to accelerate your success.